I hate clean air and water. Yeah, me too. I don't care how much companies pollute rivers and streams. Yeah. I don't even like trees. Neither do I. I just care about tax cuts. Right. Who am I? Every conservative ever. Well, that's easy. I'm a conservative. Right. Or at least I'm a progressive caricature of a conservative. Oh, wow. So I was wrong. Conservatives aren't like that. It's just their policies that are like that. <laughs> I get it. But the caricature is absurd on its face. Is it? Conservatives breathe the same air and drink the same water environmentalists do. Yeah, but they're also stupid. Like, you know, that's the problem here. I understand that it's not in their best interest to pollute the water and the air, but they seem like they still want to do it anyway, you know? Conservatives love taking their kids to the same national parks environmentalists do. Okay. So what? In fact, the whole idea of national parks was created by a Republican. Whoa. Ulysses Grant. The park system was... Liberalism defeated. ...greatly expanded by another Republican, Teddy Roosevelt. And the Environmental Protection Agency was, yes, established by a Republican. Wow. Richard Nixon. He liked clean air, too. Cool. Conservatives want to conserve things. It's right there in the name. <laughs> That's not what it's referring to. And one of the things we want to conserve is our environment. Okay. Because you can't have a healthy community. Okay, so well, that's fine. All right, so uh, I'm glad that you're on board with all this. That's cool. You you want to protect the environment. We want to protect, everyone wants to protect the environment. So, all right, so here's what I propose then. Let's not let mega corporations pollute the environment wantonly and endlessly. Like, let's not let, let's like try to transition away from fossil fuels that, you know, pump like, CO2 into the fucking atmosphere and shit. Let's stop with the fucking coal. Let's stop with the bullshit lie of clean coal. Let's r fucking raise emission standards. Let's do all these things, right? Like, let's ha let's let let if you if you're for protecting the environment and we're for protecting the environment, let's let that be reflect uh, reflected in policy, right? Without a healthy natural environment, that wasn't even hard for me to say. Right. Okay. Good. I believe it. Good. Conservatives love the environment every bit as much as environmentalists do. Yeah. The question is, what is the best way to protect it? And here's where we have big differences. Okay. The environmentalists say the best way, the only way, is through massive federal and even international regulations. Right. Conservatives say the best way to protect the environment is by protecting property rights. Oh, okay. So we agree on the goal but you guys just have a retarded, backwards, and horrible approach to that goal. I and get encouraging it. encouraging innovation. Safer, uh, more efficient. Yeah. Private property rights and innovation. That's going to do it. Because, you know, if, you know, who needs all these stupid regulations? Like, you know, I, I think a company should be able to pollute as much as they want. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, eventually they're going to innovate and create something that's not as pollution heavy with no prompting on the part of the government or the citizenry or anything. Like, yeah, okay, so our waters are filled with toxic sludge. But one day, that company is going to look at that toxic sludge river and be like, you know what? We should probably change the way we do business, even though we're making mountains of profit. Because, you know, uh, we care about the environment, man. We just do. You know, we're not, no, no one's compelling us to, um, <laughs> the government's not mandating that we do it, but for some reason, we're just going to spend mountains of our money, the only thing we care about, to do that. Power, nuclear, geothermal, biomass, anything that generates energy at a price consumers want and can afford to pay. Okay. To the extent that government gets involved in conservation, say, protecting wildlife, it should get involved at the most local level possible. Since the farmer, forester, or fisherman in Oregon knows a lot more about his environment than some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. That's ridiculous. No. Like, being a fisherman does not mean you know anything about the fucking ecosystem. Like, all the, like I've, I've fished before. It doesn't teach you shit about the environment. You sit in a boat, getting hot and drunk. You throw a fishing line into the water. You hope a fish bites it. If one does, you reel it in and then you fucking put it in a fucking ice chest and you take it back and you fucking clean and gut it and all that shit. Or actually you get someone else to do that for you because it's icky. But that's what fishing is. That doesn't teach you anything about the delicate balance of the fucking ecosystem or, or anything. So I don't know what this idea is. Like the fisherman knows better than the bureaucrat. Maybe the bureaucrat is actually read like some scientific studies and stuff. 
or Brussels. This is part of the conservative fucking, you know, sort of mentality of like experts don't know shit. Only the common man knows what's really going on. No, the common man is a dipshit. So how can we tell which way works best? Let's examine the historical record. Okay. Today and for the last century, the worst environmental offenders have been big, repressive socialist governments. This was true in the last century. And Wait, what? No. The, the biggest polluter on earth right now is America, isn't it? China, for example, right. pumps roughly twice as much carbon into the air each year as the United States. Yeah, but that's, they're number one and we're just number two. And their population is 1.3 billion and ours is only about, what, 320 million? So they have like four times the population we do, like four or five times as much of a population density as we do. And so like if you actually did this like per capita, we would be polluting way worse than China. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? Am I fucking insane here? I think what I said just makes, what I just said makes sense. Like, okay, China population, 1.393 billion. U.S. population, let me see what that is right now. It's always jumping. The U.S. population is, like I said, 328.2 million. So our population is way smaller than theirs, yet we're polluting half as much as they do. So this argument is dog shit. When President Trump announced his intention to pull the U.S. out of the Paris... Wow. Even, even the conservative Prager U cannot bring itself to do a flattering depiction of Donald Trump. I love that. Climate Accord. Envir well, you know what? They did give him huge hands, though. That's not accurate. We all know the hands is little shrimpy hands. Environmentalists warned of imminent disaster. Yet a year later, it turned out that the United States led the world in reducing carbon emissions. It did so. What are you talking about? The Trump administration literally just lowered emission standards. Hold on. So the Trump administration literally just weakened auto emission standards. So this is just yet again another lie. Without surrendering its national sovereignty. Okay, nothing in the Paris Climate Accord, Accords uh, asked us to surrender our national sovereignty. That's just a conser that's another conservative lie. Moreover, Canada, the EU, and China, all signatories to the Paris Accord, not only failed to live up to their commitments, but increased their annual carbon emissions. Yeah, that's because it's a weak-ass half measure. The fucking Paris Climate Accords were basically a fucking joke. Because they don't actually, the Paris Climate Accords, the, the reason that they suck is because they don't actually hold any of these countries accountable. It's just like, here's some goals for you. You know what the penalty is for not meeting the goals laid out in the Paris Climate Accords? Nothing. So guess what, conservative guy on Prager U, you can't out of one side of your mouth be like, this surrenders our national sovereignty, and then on the other side of your mouth be like, and actually the Accords were a paper tiger. You can't have it both ways. Either this is some draconian accords that it's a great thing we got out of, or, you know, it's ineffectual and it doesn't fucking work and the people can't even meet the fucking standards laid out in it, which is what you're showing here. And I agree with you on this point. I agree the Paris Climate Accords are weak. They should have been stronger. But unfortunately, if they were stronger, countries like China would never have fucking signed them. The EU released an additional 40 million tons of carbon dioxide into the air that year. China, a whopping 120 million. Sorry, did you just say China? <laughs> China? Million additional tons. Right. All while wagging their fingers at Uncle Sam. Here's what you won't hear from your neighborhood Greenpeace volunteer. Fucking Greenpeace. The left favors big government solutions, not because it's better for the environment, but because it's better for leftism. Take a look at the Green New Deal, an environmental proposal embraced by virtually every major progressive in America. Forget for a moment the impracticality of a plan that would outlaw most forms of American energy and cost $93 trillion. And create a bunch of jobs and create a 
a new green infrastructure to replace our crumbled and inept infrastructure that costs uh, trillions of dollars every year, you know. Much of the proposal has nothing to do with the environment. What? Socialized medicine, reparations for historical wrongs, and a jobs guarantee program are just... Well, it's called the Green New Deal. It's not just green stuff. It's also New Deal stuff, right? It's supposed to be the fucking successor to FDR's New Deal, which, yeah, job creation is part of that. Just a few of the items on its wish list. What do socialized medicine and reparations for slavery have to do with the environment? Well, nothing. Right. But for supporters of the Green New Deal, that's okay, because their primary goal is increasing government power well beyond anything we've ever seen in America. Increasing government power? Oh, no! Now the government has the power to pay for my health care! Ah! I'm just... Oh, no! No, please don't pay for my health care government. Please don't. What? Oh, it's fascism. It's fucking fascism. Never thought I'd see the day. <sighs> and, and by the way, the Green New Deal, it's not, it's, not even a, it's not even a piece of legislation yet. Literally, the only thing that's been published on the Green New Deal was like a few pages of like, here's some general ideas about what we think a Green New Deal should look like. That's literally all that's happened yet. And already it's like, this is communism coming to America. Come and destroy our way of life. They need this power, presumably, to save us from ourselves. In contrast... I'm more like to save us from you. I mean, like, look, uh, I, uh, this video is all well and good, but um, I have, I've yet to hear you address how you're going to get giant corporations to actually care about the environment and not their bottom lines. Like, could you maybe lay that part out where it's like, here's how, you know, we're going to get all these polluting giant companies whose, uh, you know, profits are all centered around burning fossil fuels, like the coal industry and the fossil fuel industry and, you know, these giant manufacturing, uh, you know, centers and stuff. Like, how do we get them to stop polluting uh, in a free market capitalist laissez-faire kind of system? And then the fucking answer is, uh, let me see if I can find the crickets. Nope. 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 There it is. Yeah, that's the answer right there. Hey, how do we get giant corporations to stop polluting without regulating them? Trust conservatives are all about innovating our way to a cleaner environment without depriving anyone of their freedom. Take, for example, that monster of all green monsters, uh -huh. horizontal drilling for oil and gas, right. also known as fracking. Yeah. The left demonizes fracking, even though it actually makes the environment cleaner. The oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't realize. It actually makes the environment cleaner, you guys. Yeah, fracking's good. Uh, proponents of fracking claim the drilling technique is safe and clean method of securing essential sources of power that will meet U.S. energy you know, needs for decades. But opponents say the industry is whitewashing fracking's real effects, a long list that includes air pollution, groundwater contamination, health problems, and surface water pollution. Recent history supports some of their claims. A fracking well in Bradford County, Pennsylvania, operated by Chesapeake Energy Corporation, malfunctioned in April 2011, spewing thousands of gallons of contaminated fracking water uh, for more than 12 hours. And in 2012, Chesapeake was again cited for contaminating the drinking water of three families in Pennsylvania, resulting in a settlement of $1.6 million, according to NPR.org. Many companies keep their specific recipes for fracking fluids secret, arguing that this is intellectual property. Uh, researchers from Duke University tested drinking water at 60 sites throughout Pennsylvania and New York. Their research was published in 2011 in the Proceedings of the uh, National Academy of Sciences, the researchers found that the drinking water near fracking wells had levels of methane that fell squarely within the range that the U.S. Department of uh, the Interior says is dangerous and requires urgent hazard mitigation action. Oh, my God, it sounds so awesome. It sounds great, doesn't it? Wow. That, I mean, uh, yeah, it sounds like the environment's cleaner. Levels of methane, uh, you know, that meet the, the U.S. Department of Interior level of uh, danger and requiring ult uh, urgent hazard mitigation. Wow, yeah, that sounds fucking so good. It's making everything rich great. And now independent of Middle Eastern oil. Something yeah. thought impossible a decade.
No, no one thought it was impossible to be free of Middle Eastern oil. We would just we wanted to just not be dependent on oil, period. Because it fucking pumps CO2 in the atmosphere. That thing you pretended to care about earlier. Remember that? Remember earlier in the video when you were talking about how bad China was for releasing too much CO2? Even though their population is like five times larger than ours? A decade ago. How does it make the environment cleaner? By releasing up to 50% less carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than coal. And since it's also cheaper, people are happy to buy it. Not because government forces them to but because it saves them money. Uh, no, because they have no fucking alternative. By the way, according to a Harvard study, fracking is safe and improving all the time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good, good for them. Yep, innovation that produces abundant clean... Let's just ignore the studies that say the contrary things. Let's ignore the fucking evidence of, uh, of raised methane levels in drinking water near fracking sites. We can just pretend that didn't happen. Harvard said it's okay. Energy at a fair price without infringing on my freedom. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look in this Harvard study. Was there like a citation down there? Oh, okay. Interesting. It comes from Harvard Business School. Let's see who wrote this. So it's Michael E. Porter, David S. G., and Gregory J. Pope. Okay, so the first guy, Michael Porter is an American academic known for his theories on economics, business strategy, and social causes. So no scientific resume there. How about David S. G.? Uh, can't find anything about David S. G. See some doctors named David S. G. I don't know. Maybe it is a medical doctor. And Gregory J. Pope, the third author of the study. So the only one of these guys I can actually find is not a scientist, but a business guy. This report comes from Harvard Business School. And apparently, PragerU is funded by fracking billionaires. Let me see if I can confirm that. The organization relies on donations, and much of its early funding came from fracking billionaires Dan and Ferris Wilkes. <sighs> Okay, so we have a study. So the study being cited here is from Harvard Business School, written by business academics, not by scientists. And this comes from a source that is funded by the fracking industry. So I think we can totally dismiss any of the claims being made here as 100% bogus propaganda uh, and nothing more. Fracking is safe and improving all the time. Uh, just ask the billionaires that paid for this video. They got all their money from fracking. Super safe. Yep, innovation that... This fucking, this totally bogus Harvard study written by businessmen proves it. It's like, what? Produces abundant clean energy at a fair price without infringing on my freedom. Yeah. That works for this conservative. Except for your freedom to fucking have clean drinking water, I guess. Conservative you'd think it would work for anyone who cares about the environment and people. So let me repeat, I love clean air and water. No, you don't. And I don't own even a single share of Exxon. Right, but you're, <laughs> but you got, I don't own a single share of Exxon, but yeah, you're getting paid by a bunch of fracking billionaires who fund PragerU, right? So that's almost as good. I'm Michael Knowles. Oh wait, you know, I love the specificity of that too. I don't own a single share of Exxon. I mean, you know, Shell. <laughs> it's like, right? So very specific. Oddly specific, I might say. Host of the Michael Knowles Show for Prager University. Yeah, awesome. You're great. I love you. You're a wonderful guy. Very decent human being.